It's Mr. Stockman. I've been dying to talk to you since All about right. 9.22 p.m. election night. Is this Republican Party, they go Ronald Reagan this, Ronald Reagan that. I know Brendan's going to talk about this in a bit. Is, are these Republicans anything like what they re revere? Um, I seriously doubt it. Uh, we're going to have a worse stalemate, not progress. Uh, the Republicans who came in are heavily neocon, hawk, foreign interventionist <clears throat> oriented. They want to raise defense spending. They want to blow the sequester caps. That will create well, a tremendous conflict in the Congress. Nothing will get done. They're essentially in a fiscal coma. They might as well put out a do not disturb sign and well, get it over I, with. I'm going to rip up the script right here because you go right to what I was talking about yesterday, which is the sequestration. <laughs> Brief us now. 2016? is when we run into those limits. Right. Well, we Nobody in, wants that, right? Well, they've passed year after year a 10-year cap, but when we get to the uh, two years ahead, they then uh, remove the cap and find some excuse uh, to work around it. So these caps are meaningless. They keep counting the same savings. Uh, the idea that the budget is getting better is so wrong unless you think the business cycle has been repealed. If you don't think the business cycle has been repealed, that we might have a recession somewhere down the road, you get rid of rosy scenario, which is what the you know CBO uses. No, rosy scenario <laughs> plays shortstop for the Red Sox this year. But you get rid out. of that, do a realistic forecast for the next 10 years, and you're talking about 10 to 15 trillion of built-in deficit, the realistic uh, forward view, on top of the 18 trillion debt we already have. So nothing has been fixed. We're drifting towards the next God, you're gloomy. Brendan, save us, please. And everybody's it's budget scenarios have been uh, using the same assumptions, that the same Savings will happen somewhere down the line, never next year, maybe in five years, probably in ten. Exactly right, but even look at CBO. They say that the uh, deficit starts to rise again in 19, or 2016, 2017, and that's with 3.5% real economic growth. Right. That's with full employment forever. That's with 5% okay. wage growth that hasn't happened. I want to jump forward. We're going to do this chart later. Here's a deficit to GDP chart with that surplus in the Clinton years. And we've come back nicely. Why are you so gloomy? Can't the president take a victory lap for narrowing the deficit rapidly? No, we're in the fifth year. We've had five years of recovery. We're in the sixth year. We still have a half trillion deficit. Agreed. Three percent of GDP. Agreed. And we're going to have another cycle in the next 10 years. We'll drop down below 5, 8, 10 percent the next time we have a big upset in the economy. You're supposed to get balance or a surplus during the top of the cycle. Does so Alan, can but does the Alan Greenspan agree that statement? Brendan, I would say a surplus can be damaging for an economy. Can't we get near a, a, a zero bound? Okay, that's to what 1%? I'm saying. We should get near, uh, we should get uh, balanced unless we want to keep adding to the debt year after year after year, which I think we're in trouble. Mm -hmm. We've got an aging population. We've got an economy economy that is not growing, cannot grow more than one or two percent a year. I want to bring in Paul Roberts, author of The Impulse Society. You're very critical of the short-termism that we see, not just in our culture, our consumer culture, but also in politics as well. Uh, putting together a budget obviously requires us to look long-term, and that's not happening. But how much of that is because the two sides can't even agree on the assumptions that go into a budget? Well, for, I mean, clearly, it, that's a big part of it right now. Um, I, sorry, Mr. Stockman, but we're going to have to spend quite a bit more in the next few years on things like infrastructure, on long-term research, if we're going to get that economic recovery, mm -hmm. sustainable recovery that you're uh, talking about. But in addition, we've got a, um, you know, we've got a, a financialization of the political sphere. You know, we've got so much money in the political sphere right. that you know that donors are now considered investors, and investors want to return on their investment. And mm -hmm. the fastest way, or one of the fastest ways, to get a return on a political right. investment is to go negative. Well, as we go to break, Victor Wonder over here, please. This is David Stockman. Read this this morning. David Stockman starts his morning with the New York Times, <laughs> and it's the worst voter turnout in 72 years. Back to 1942. I mean, Paul Roberts were completely disassociated. We're disengaged. From our right, we're right. Disengaged. And, and it's in part because I think voters look and they see that the political sphere is acting like an arm of Wall Street. It's after short-term, quick returns. It's not interested in making long-term commitments. So why should a voter engage with that? Why? You sound like David Stockman. Stop that. I'm sitting right next to him. I'm, I'm absorbing it. It's the osmosis. 